around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. about, Doc? Yeah, what am I? I'm talking about Matt. Out traipsing all over the country after some killer. Maybe getting himself shot. Oh, my goodness. And Doc. here you sit, sunning yourself with your feet propped up on the porch rail, half asleep. <laughs> you just look here. Oh, shameful. Just shameful. Now, now, Doc, you know Mr. Dillon told me to stay here and watch after Well, then it seems like you could find something more useful to do with your time. You know, I'd feel a little bit guilty if I were you. Doc, you're just plain can't think you're such that you are. Oh! Hold up there. Oh, my. Look at that. Well, looks like we made it, Bessie Me. Sure does, Paul. Now, there's a pair of real beauties. Well, when they look like they both come off a hog farm. Hey, you! Reckon he's yelling at us. You, not me. Hey! You talking to me, mister? Of course I am. That there, the Dodge House? It's got a sign. Says it real clear. Now, folks tell me that that there's the only staying place you got in Dodge City. Is that right? If you mean a hotel, I suppose that's right. You suppose? Well, it seems like you ought to know if you belong here. Mister, I belong here, all right, but maybe you don't. I go where I please, sonny. Well, with an attitude like that, you ain't gonna go far. Now, who's gonna stop me? Now, Paul. Mister, if you wasn't so old and scrawny, I, I, I swear I'd... So you right out in the middle of that street. Well, don't let nothing stop you from trying. Uh, wait uh, just a minute here. Uh, who are you? Doc Adams. And it seems to me that you walked up here with a pretty big chip on your shoulder. Now, that you? ain't no concern of yours, so you just keep shut. Now, here, you you listen. You cause any trouble, and I'll throw you in jail if you cool off some. Jail? How you gonna do that? You ain't no lawman. Well, I'm the only law they are in Dodge right now. You? Yes, me. Well, well, uh, no offense, ma'am. I mean, we've been on the trail for quite a spell, and sometimes, well, sometimes a man gets a mite short, you know. And I don't give you no right to go around smarting off at folks like that. You're right, Marshal. You're purely right, and, and I'm sorry. Well, uh, Wilker's I... my name. Sedge Wilker. And this here's my very own daughter. Step up here, Bessie Me. I'm right pleased. Uh, I do, ma'am. And uh, what might your name be, Marshal? Uh, uh, Chester Proudfoot, but, I, but I, I've never not... seen a real marshal before. Uh, well, look, see, I... I, well, I figure I'm... Bessie May and me might stay right here in Dodge while. Uh, well, that'll be nice, but I want to tell you that I ain't... Looks like a fine town. Real fine. Ain't that so, Bessie May? It sure is, Pa. You know, it just might be we're going to find what we're looking for here in Dodge City. Yes, sir. It just might be. <laughs> Oh, Chester. 
Are you doing it alone, or do you want some company? Yeah, well, hello, Miss Kitty. Sam, bring me a beer, will you? Yeah, sure, Miss Kitty. You want another one, Chester? Yeah, no, thank you. No. You, um, heard from Matt yet? No, ma'am, I ain't. Seems like he's been gone an awful long time. Better in a week now. Hey, here you are, Miss Kitty. Oh, thanks, Sam. You're welcome, Matt. Wonder if Matt ever caught the man he was after. Cliff Matters? Mm-hmm. I sure do hope so. Them folks up in Hayes City got a rope waiting for him. Feelings run pretty high when a man kills a whole family just to steal a few dollars. Oh, I hope Matt gets him. No, if he's going to get caught, Mr. Dillon can do it. Sure do wish I could have went with him, though. Well, somebody had to stay and keep the town from burning down, Chester. Yeah, well, I suppose he can... Oh, my. What? What? Yo, look. That ornery old sod buster said Wilker. Oh, hey, Chester. I've been looking all over for you, Chester. You have? Yeah. Oh, ain't you going to introduce me to the lady? Oh, well, uh, this is Miss Kitty. She she owned the Long Branch. Oh, I do, ma'am. Wilker's my name. Sedge Wilker. Mr. Wilker? Say, this is a right nice place you got here. Right nice. Uh, Mr. Wilker, you said you was looking for me. Yes, sir, that's true enough. Bessie May's waiting for you. Bessie May's what? Yeah. She went and found herself a cook stove, and then she baked the pie. Well, that's fine, Mr. Wilker. Well, the fact is, Bessie May, she baked that pie for you. Kind of make up for all them things I said. Oh, well, now, that ain't necessary. Oh, yes, it is. We figure we owe you a proper apology. This is our way of showing it. No, no, Mr. Wilker, I... You ain't going to refute our apology, are you? Bessie May's got herself all fancied up. Oh, she'll be mighty proud to see you. I'll go on, Chester. The pie will do you good. Uh, well, now, that part sounds fine, Miss Kitty, but to tell the truth, that ain't what's concerning me. You're back. It's the middle of the afternoon. What have you got the door locked for? I've been hiding. What? Well, oh, I can explain. Oh, never mind, Chester. All right, get him, Meadows. Oh, no. Push. Meadows. Ah, so you're Meadows. I knew Miss Dillon would get you. Catching me and holding me is two different things. He sure must have made you chase him all over the territory, Miss Dillon. You've been gone the best part of two weeks. Yeah, lock him up, Chester. I'm going to keep him here a couple of days before taking him to Hayes City. All right, sir. Come on, you. Get your hands off him. Now, listen. Get your hands off, mister. I've been pushed around just all I aim to be. You can walk or get carried, but you're going to go into that cell. Okay. But it's a long time between this flea-bit town and Hayes City, Marshal. You better remember that. All right, Metis. We're all through eating. I'll take that tray. Come and get it. I ain't gonna fool with you, mister. Now you just pick up that tray and things and slide them through these bars right now. Yeah. That's better. Kind of touchy, ain't you? Well, you ain't making it easy not to be, and I'll tell you something else. It's going to be mighty nice to get you out of here. You ain't been nothing but trouble to me since Mr. Dillon rung you in. Well, you better just hope I don't get loose before he takes me to Hayes City. I just might come looking for you. Well, you ain't going to get loose, so don't fret about that. Chester? Oh, no. Chester, you back there? Uh, 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 yes, Bessie May. My goodness, I've just been looking everywhere to you. Bessie May, you ought not to come back here. Why? Well, this is where the prisoners is at. Oh, he's a prisoner? Y- yes, he is. Now, go on. Come on out of here. I got everything ready. Hmm? The buggy and all. Buggy? Yeah, outside. What for? 
You're going to take me on a ride. No, 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 no. I tell you, Matt, that's the only way I can. Oh, hello, Chester. Bessie May, uh... Oh, say, maybe we ought to leave, man. Yeah, maybe you're right, Doc. No, no, Doc, you come back here. Well, uh, Chester, you, we wouldn't want to interrupt any. You in? You We're in. going for a buggy ride. Oh, a buggy ride. Yeah, that Bessie May, I told oh, you. Oh, buggy rides are nice this time of year. Buggy ride. <laughs> Mr. Dillon? What? Yeah, well, uh, uh, this here's Bessie May Wilker. How are you, Miss Wilker? I do. Uh, uh, see, Miss Dillon, her and her pa come to Dodds, and they just... I mean, she just... Well, will you just tell her I got too much to do to go on no buggy ride? I uh, trust her. I can't very well do a thing like that. Of course that. you can. You can, too. You can. Send me down to the depot or something. How come you're doing that, Chester? Huh? Do I... I mean asking him for orders and such. You're the marshal. Marshal? Him? Yeah, well, now, that's another thing, Miss Dillon. Bessie May and her pa thinks I'm Marshal of Dodge City. I've been trying to tell them. Oh, now, Chester. Well, I have, I have, but they wouldn't listen, and you sure wasn't helping none, Doc. Chester? Bessie May, Bessie May, I ain't going on no buggy ride. I ain't talking about that. It's what you just said about not being Marshal. Mr. Dillon's the Marshal. He always has been. But you, when we come to Dodge, you said... I never neither. I, I said I was the only law in town at that time. And that's because Mr. Dillon was gone after that Cliff Meadows fellow, that, that prisoner right back there. Then you just ain't been telling the truth about nothing. Yeah, Bessie May, I... Just a proud foot? You're awful. You're just awful. Ouch. Here now, you... Well, her thinking you were Marshal seemed to mean a good deal to her, Chester. Yes, sir, but I never told her no such a thing. Not really. Oh, well, she's just mad. Maybe she'll get over it. Well, I just assume she didn't. I tell you, Miss Dunn, that woman was near driving me out of my mind the past few days. She's the lady I was hiding from the day you come home. She likes you, Chester. Well, I don't like her. I swear I've saw prettier faces on a warthog. Oh, oh, now, Chester. Well, I have. Then she started painting her face all up. I tell you, it's just become pitiful. Well, maybe she's never had a man to court her before, Chester. You should be kind of easy on her. I have a hard enough time just keeping hidden from her. Come on. I'll buy you a dock of beer. Oh, thank you, Mr. Yeah, Thomas. that's a good idea, man. My throat does feel a little dry. You know, I I, I, I still can't figure out Bessie May acting the way she done. It just don't make no sense. Well, it's like I said, Chester. Chester, she likes you. It hurt her when she found out that you weren't what she thought you were. Well, it seems funny, though. Hey, you, Chester. Yeah, oh, no. That Bessie May. Oh. Yeah, I knew it. I'd find you crawling around somewhere. Crawling around. If you ain't crawling now, you will be when I finished with you. Now, you look here, Mr. Wilson. If Wilder, there's anything I... I hate, it's a liar. I suppose you're talking about me not being Marshal. You bet I am. Bessie May just told me. I tried to explain all that to you before. It ain't my fault if you wouldn't listen now. Oh, it ain't, huh? Well, I think you've done it a purpose, and I'm calling you a dirty liar. All right, Wilker, that's enough. Now, who are you? Matt Dillon. Dillon? Oh, oh, then you're the real marshal, huh? That's right. Well, this Chester's a cheat. I said that's enough. No, it ain't. Not near enough. Ain't nobody going to make a fool out of Sedge Wilker. Nobody ain't tried to make no fool out of you, liar. I I've took just about all I'm going to take off of you. Yeah, you ain't. There's a lot more. And I tell you, when I get to it, you'll be all right. Sorry, yes, thank you. Ah, doggone crazy old fool. What do you want to get so riled up about something that don't really matter for? Seems like it does matter to him. That Bessie May. That, that coffee's kind of weak, ain't it, Mr. Dillon? Huh? Tastes fine to me. Well, it ain't got much of a bite to it. Well, it doesn't grab you and throw you down, if that's what you mean. No, no, no. What I meant... Uh, as soon as you finish... What did you mean? Well, it's just kind of weak. No. Oh. As soon as you're finished, let's get some food over to Cliff Meadows. I want to get an early start for Hayes City. Yes, sir. Marshal! Marshal! Yeah? You've got to come quick. Oh, what's the matter? The bank's been robbed. What? I just opened up for the day. I went in, and there was the safe. It was wide open. Mr. Botkin lying on the floor, unconscious. Chester, go get Doc. Yes, sir. Marshal, I know who did it. It was that prisoner of yours. I'd seen him once before, so I knew what he looked like. What, Cliff Meadows? Yes, sir. Just a few minutes ago, I saw him riding out of town, riding just as fast as he could go. Boy, am 
I'm glad this day's over. My athlete's foot is killing me. Itches and stings. Hey, try NP27. Really worked for me. NP27 treatment roots out athlete's foot, penetrates below skin surface where other remedies can't reach, even into toenails. NP27 liquid stops itch, relieves pain, promotes healthy tissue. NP27 powder guards against new infection. NP27 treatment roots out athlete's foot or your druggist will refund your money. Over here, Chester. That him, Mr. Dunn? That's him. I've been thinking, how in the world do you suppose he ever got out of jail in the first place? I don't know. Come on. All right, hold it right there, Meadows. What? Don't try anything. Where'd you come from? We've been following you for two days. Well, I ain't going back to Dodge, Marshal. You'll go. And do you want to tell me how you got out of jail? <laughs> I bet you'd like to know, wouldn't you? I'll find out. Not from me, you won't. You didn't break out. Somebody opened that cell for you. Is that a fact? All right, unbuckle the belt and drop your gun. Like I said, I ain't going back to Dodge, and I ain't going to Hayes City, neither. You're going to go back with us, or we're going to bury you right here. Now, you decide. I already have. I'll be a fool. I ain't going to hang. <laughs> you should have waited for your trial, Mendes. Maybe. Maybe I like it better like this. What did you do with the bank money? It won't do you any good now. Bank money. The Dodge City Bank, you robbed it. The bank teller saw you right out of town. I didn't rob no bank. You were seen. No, I didn't do it. And your partner did it, the one who turned you loose. I don't have no partner. Didn't even know the old fellow who turned me loose. Old fellow? What old fellow? This scrawny old coot. Come in, said something about that. Lion Chester. Then he unlocked my cell. Well, for, uh, Too I... bad about that trial, Marshal. I don't think I'm going to make it. Mr. Dillon, the man that let him out of jail, you, you don't suppose... It was Sedge Wilker? Yeah, I think maybe it was, Chester. Wilker snuck in and turned Meadows loose. And maybe even robbed the bank. He sure wouldn't still be here in Dodge. Why not? Nobody really saw who robbed the bank. Nobody saw who turned Meadows loose. But yes, I know, but it seemed like they just cut out and run. Is this her room? Yes, sir. What? What do you want? I want to talk to you, Wilker. Some other time. I'm busy. Well, we'll talk now. <laughs> What do you mean, busting in? You ain't got no right. Bob, what are they doing here? You and Betsy May packing to leave, Sedge? What if we are? It ain't none of your business. Why did you do it, Sedge? I don't know what you're talking about. You turned Cliff Meadows loose from jail. Hello, oh, you're crazy. Why would I do that? So you could rob the bank and everybody would think Meadows did it. Well, he did. Everybody's seen him. Find him and you'll find the robber. We did find him. Uh, huh? I had to kill him. Oh. Well, well, then what's all the fuss about? Just before he died, he told us that you'd let him out of jail. All right. All right, so I turned him loose. I wanted to get back at you and Chester, but that don't prove I robbed no bank. We've been asking around town, Wilker. You've bought over $100 worth of things in the past two days. Where did you get the money to do that? Where did I get it? Well, I, I, I shaved it, that's what. We, we had us a farm, and, uh, and we wrote things. It won't work, Suds. There's too much against you. You ain't going to take my money. Not after all I went through, you ain't. I'll kill you first. No, don't. Hey. you do it, Sedge? Never. Never had nothing, Marshal. 
never had nothing at all. A lot of people don't. Uh, Bessie May. I'm, I'm right here. <laughs> take care of yourself. You hear now? You, you take care of yourself. Paul. I'm sorry, Bessie May. He didn't mean no harm, Marshal. He didn't mean no harm at all. He got tired of scratching in the ground for a living and never quite making it. Yeah. Pa was awful smart, though. Did you know that? You mean blaming Cliff Meadows for the robbery? Oh, no. That was an accident, like. The real plan was me. You? I was supposed to fix up all pretty, like and shine up to the marshal. What? You know. So he'd be too busy to notice when Pa was robbing the bank. Bessie May, you... You mean... Is that why you was tagging after me all the time? Well, you was the only marshal in town then, Chester. But you lied to us. You wasn't no marshal at all. I never... I tried to Had tell you... Had it been for that, everything would have worked out just like Pa said. But it... All went wrong, didn't it? Yeah, Bessie May. I'm afraid it did. to take a quick hop to Paris tomorrow. It's not Paris, Kentucky we're talking about. It's Paris, France, the great city on the Seine, a long way from bluegrass land. The CBS Radio Network is offering you a lightning-fast tour via the Monday through Friday feature entitled Your Man in Paris. Your Man happens to be CBS News correspondent David Schoenbrunn, whose perceptive eye makes for fluent, fascinating observations about many matters Gallic. Your Man in Paris, weekdays. Also heard each Monday through Friday... A Woman's Washington with Nancy Honchman, which takes you on a gale-oriented tour of the nation's capital. There's In Hollywood, hosted by Ralph Story, with absorbing vignettes of Celluloid City. Personal Story brings you autobiographies in sound of a new celebrity each week. And for entertaining, rewarding data on a host of topics, Information Central with Alan Jackson, and Sidelights with Charles Collingwood. Weekdays, hear each of these stimulating features right here on CBS Radio. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Ray Kemper, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Ralph Moody, Gene Bates, John Daner, and Barney Phillips. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gun Smoke. Arthur Godfrey every weekday on the CBS Radio Network.